All right, welcome back. So now let's turn our gaze towards the Basin and Range province. The reason we talk about this next is because if it wasn't for the San Andreas Fault, we would not have the Basin and Range province. What the hell is the Basin and Range province? Well, it's this green area here, kind of extending as far north as Idaho, uh, and then to parts of Utah, California, Arizona, New Mexico, and into Mexico. And really, almost the whole state of Nevada is in this Basin and Range province. Now, this is due to the San Andreas Fault. Because this went from a convergent boundary that was pushing in, pushing in on the western... <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me, pardon me. It's a doozy. So this area went from a fully convergent boundary, you remember, so kind of pushing in on the western edge of North America, to this part turning into a transform boundary. Now you got the Pacific Plate kind of sliding this way relative to the North American Plate, and that's relieving some pressure because, you know, convergent was pushing. Now this is actually kind of pulling on it and stretching this area of the country, the southwest, a little bit. You can see how this kind of matches up with this. All right. <clears throat> More on that in just a second. So again, Earth's crust in the Basin Range province has been stretched and thinned out. It cracked. Some things got thrust up. That's what became the mountain ranges. Some things dropped down, and those became the downdrop basins. Now the ranges that are formed, because it was stretched this way, we get a lot of cracks going north-south. So a lot of the mountain ranges are oriented north-south. So here is, <clears throat> excuse me, Nevada, which is almost entirely in this basin and range province. And you can see all of these north-south trending um, ranges, mountain ranges. In between them are the basins. So the reason Las Vegas kind of looks the same as uh, Phoenix, which kind of looks the same as the Yuma area-ish, which kind of looks the same as Tucson, is because we're all in this basin and range province that underwent this extension once the San Andreas changed to uh, th that part of the boundary to a transform boundary, relieving pressure on the North American plate, stretching and thinning out the southwest, the crust that is now in the southwest, causing it to crack. Some things went up, some things went down. Um, <clears throat> the 400 or so ranges that are in the uh, Basin and Range province are kind of bounded on both sides by faults, which indicate, again, ranges went up, the block that's the basin kind of dropped down. Um, here are two videos. They're, they'll be linked in the YouTube video description below. But um, I'll kind of play maybe both for you. Do I have time? I think so. I'll play both for you, um, and I'll kind of just narrate over them what's going on. But essentially what's happening, let me kind of explain what's going on here with the ranges, the part that's popped up, and the basin, the part that fell down. All right, so just imagine this is, let me make me a little bit bigger so I can see what the heck I'm doing. I'm all out of focus, too. Look at that. Now I'm in focus. Okay, imagine, you know, this is a little slice of, of the North American crust. And there's a convergent boundary com compressing, making everything nice and, and neat and held together. But all of a sudden, right, let me see here. Go this way. But all of a sudden, that pressure from the convergent boundary is no longer there and things can kind of relax things broke things tilted and then now you can see how I got these sharp spines sticking up those are going to be the mountain ranges and the areas in between are going to be the down dropped basins and that's what we see here right? and that's what we see here so because that pressure was kind of released and it wasn't went from a convergent boundary to a transform boundary Stretching, thinning, cracking, movement. Some pieces went up, mountain ranges. Some pieces pieces went down. Those are the the basins. Um, okay, let's see if we can find what we need here. Yep, here we go. So let me kind of just um, mute this and narrate over it. So this is just an image of the ranges and basins, ranges and basins. Again, it extends down into Arizona and New Mexico as well. So the plate uh, is starting to be stretched and thinned as the San Andreas um, comes to life. 
because this plate is stretching and thinning, hot mantle material is actually more prone to rise up to help further kind of push and stretch and crack this plate. So the uh, crust begins to fracture as the plate rises and continues to thin. Mountains rise, valleys drop. This is what it was before the extension. And then now look at the area after, um, after the extension. 30% more extension, okay? Uh, and then this is the other video. Oh, I don't know what's going on there, but I don't think it's a good hack for anything. Because of this very same process, this is actually what helped to um, create volcanic activity in Arizona. Now, all the volcanoes in Arizona are extinct, but there was volcanoes everywhere. Because of that same thinning and cracking, it allowed magma to find its way up in places, and eventually if that magma kind of melted material and then made its way to the surface, erupted as lava flows and created different types of volcanoes. We go over more of this in Geology 101, but because of this same extensional process, this is why we had volcanoes in Arizona. There is still the potential for volcanic activity in Arizona up near Flagstaff, but that is very, very, very small. Yeah, that's fun. So yeah, because of that very same extensional process and the cracks, it allowed the magma to kind of move up, depressurizing the magma, allowing it to melt. That melted material turned to magma, melting the um, uh, the, the uh, lithosphere, part of the lith lithosphere. That lithosphere, once it melted, became less dense, kind of bubbled up. If it made it to its surface, it erupted as a lava flow or a volcanic uh, eruption. So yeah, good times. There we go. All right. For your reference, this is the uh, volcanic um, field map of Arizona. Every color that you see, the, the red, orange, yellow, green, or blue, is areas of large-scale volcanic activity that occurred in um, Arizona, with the red being the most recent. Um, the most famous of all of these is the Flagstaff volcanic field. If you've ever been to Flagstaff, every mountain, every hill that you see, those are all extinct volcanoes. They're all volcanoes. There's volcano uh, tubes, lava river caves, um, the big mountain, the uh, San Francisco mountain. That is an old extinct volcano. Again, all the smaller hills that you see around Flagstaff, those are all volcanoes. Hell, even in around Phoenix, we've got some volcanoes out past Tonopah. Uh, there's some old extinct volcanoes out there as well. They're everywhere in Arizona. They're everywhere. In fact, out in Mesa, if you've ever been to the uh, Superstition Mountains, that's actually an, an old extinct um, super volcano. Again, Geology 101, we cover much more of that stuff. But in any case, um, before the, this faulting and extensional process occurred, the Nevada and Sevier and Laramide, uh, Laramide orogenies did you know, shape the area, but then the extensional process is really what made the um, basin and range uh, uh, province that we that we see today. And that kind of occurred during the late Miocene. And that's even why we see the uh, stuff that we do around Phoenix. All right, so here's downtown Phoenix. Here's the Agua Fria River. Here's the 10. So EMCC is probably somewhere right around here. Here's the White Tank Mountains, north-south. Here's the Sierra Estrella, pretty much north-south. McDowell Mountains, pretty much north-south. And in between, we have these down-dropped basins. Now, when people ask about the Valley of the Sun, do you know where the valley is? It's below us, covered in sediment. Yeah, the valley's below us a few miles, covered in erosional, weathered and eroded sediment off of the surrounding mountains. So every everything that, for the most part, uh, unless you're fancy and you live on Camelback Mountain, you know, all of the other houses are built on eroded sediment uh, from weathering and erosion that occurred um, during the Quaternary period. Uh, but again, so sediment derived from the surrounding ranges and transported uh, into the surrounding basins, 
accumulated as either Playa Lakes or alluvial fan deposits, and that's kind of what we live and drive and work on here in uh, the Phoenix area. Um, before the all of this deformation occurred, the basin and range actually had a subtropical climate, um, so quite lovely and pleasant. But with the rising of all of these mountains, it created something called a rain shadow, making the climate increasingly drier. So here's the uh, here's a cross section of kind of a uh, Phoenix Tempe area, which is pretty much the same as our side of town as well. You could imagine um, prior to the extension, just old Precambrian igneous rock, and then due to that release and pressure, as the plate thinned and stretched, right, these these blocks kind of started to tilt, right? The little peaks that little parts that peaked up, those are the ranges. The downdrop areas, these are the basins. And this is all the sediment that's weathered and eroded off of these uh, rocks as they were uplifted. In some areas, the blocks are kind of ground down. In some, they're not. The white tanks are still up, right? The Australian mountains are still up. The Mount McDowell Mountains are still uh, above us. But, um, yeah, but so the valley, so where's, again, where's the valley? Again, the valley is below us. It's filled in with sediment. Yeah below us by about three miles. So let's keep an eye on Arizona and the extension. <clears throat> You'll see that this part of the southwest actually grows as we go through the Cenozoic. You can see it actually kind of moving out to the west um, as that convergent boundary pressure stopped and then the transform boundary also kind of pulling on it, stretching and thinning it out a little bit as well. Let me go back in reverse order. All right, let me go through forward again. Again, watch what's going on in this area, especially Nevada in the basin and range, province. Can you see all those little squiggles? And again, this extends all the way down into Mexico. Okay. All right. Um, we have one more kind of geologic event to talk about, at least a big one for North America, and that's the ice ages that occurred. So we'll talk about those when we come back. It's a little bit of a longer section, so we'll probably break it up into a couple of videos. All right, I'll see you when we come back.